semana nós organizamos o quarto Fórum Internacional de Laser Terapia da Uninove, que ele acontece concomitantemente ao quarto encontro de alunos e ex-alunos do programa de biofotônica da Uninove. Nós recebemos aqui os nossos alunos, os nossos convidados nacionais e internacionais para debater os temas mais atuais em biofotônica. E é muito importante termos espaços de encontros científicos para atualização dos temas, para reforçar a liderança do Brasil nessa área e também para receber os nossos colegas do exterior para mostrar o que nós fazemos, para mostrar a nossa universidade, que tem o maior grupo do Brasil em publicação nessa área e aprender sempre com esses encontros. I thank São Paulo University because uh, uh, I had the possibility to give uh, uh, resume uh, summary about all the uh, uh, possible uh, uh, applications of non-surgical laser in uh, the uh, uh, medicine uh, in the patients. So uh, I uh, searched to uh, uh, resume to uh, unit many uh, topics, many uh, Uh, lesions, many pathologies, where the use of laser uh, is uh, demonstrated as the best therapy uh, for that uh, type of, of lesions. Uh, so I uh, spoken also about the new trend, about the new uh, uh, new. Uh, uses uh, new uh, uh, applications of laser in diseases and uh, in some situation uh, not uh, much uh, good uh, treatable with the drugs and with uh, other treatments. Uh, for this reason I must uh, speak uh, uh, about the skin, but also about the nervous system, but also about the blood, all the system of the human body, included the energetic system, because we are the matter, but we have also the energy. And the energy is often forgotten, but the energy is important in the human body. And the laser is energy. And the recent studies uh, demonstrated that the laser uh, can influence the uh, human energy. And this is very important. I think that uh, the uh, uh, use of lasers uh, in, uh, at the university level increase. I, uh, in Florence, I have uh, my, my uh, institution is called the Incubator. The University of Florence Incubator. The incubator is the uh, Institute of New Ideas. So, uh, the, in the New Ideas, we uh, study very much the epigenetic effects of lasers, uh, of biophotons in the human body, but also on the plants, uh, also on the animals, for instance. Because uh, uh, this is uh, a revolution, I think, uh, the next. Uh, a uh, few years uh, because uh, the laser is not only a instrument uh, for uh, the uh, beauty, for the aesthetic uh, medicine, it is not only the uh, instrument for the rehabilitation of the sport, but also an instrument uh, which gives energy. And so uh, uh, the epigenetic uh, study, the Uh, transformation of the DNA and the RNA uh, with the energy uh, of the, uh, the body. And the laser uh, is uh, the first instrument which can change the situation of the uh, uh, genetic, uh, uh, genetic uh, uh, person, the genetic system of the person. And it is uh, uh, very interesting because all the diseases can be interested about this, uh, uh, this fact. Uh, I'm a physical therapist, this time my father is a medical doctor. 
Um, I chose physical therapy because uh, it, it led me uh, to be more near to the patients than the medical doctor is, okay? Uh, because I like uh, motor control, as you can see. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm training in that and also laser, so I got a double formation. It's not just in laser, but I'm doing a PhD in motor control and neurophysiology, and then I study laser with him. So it's a combination of the two. I got some influence, influence by my father, but also by my own, uh, my own uh, uh, path. Okay, that's how it is. Talk about the. Um, Possibility to treat the, the person with CNS injuries, okay, with two kinds of treatments. One is physical therapy, one, and one is laser therapy. There, um, that I, I really would like to combine them because uh, uh, we, we think that the laser can um, give you uh, new uh, possibilities of uh, movement, also of uh, sensibility of uh, uh, neuronal sprouting while the physical therapy uh, let you uh, use all these uh, <laughs> these improvements okay so uh, we did that with many kinds of different patients like spinal cords or uh, cns uh, like trauma uh, clinical trauma uh, or uh, maybe uh, cerebral palsy or other other uh, other uh, kind of patients and we try also to uh, explore new fields of uh, motor control, try to give a, a definition of spasticity and try to find a, a, a treatment for spasticity that nowadays doesn't exist. Bom, eu trabalho com laser há 24 anos, né? eu sou cirurgiã dentista, especializada na parte de estética oral, né? E fiz toda a minha pós-graduação na USP de São Carlos, com o professor Vanderlei Banhato. Então, a partir daí, o laser, as fontes de luz, fazem parte de todos os meus atendimentos. E mais recentemente, dentro da odontologia, nós temos trabalhado muito com a face, né? Como um todo, considerando a, a boca, mas também como parte de uma harmonização orofacial. Olha, ontem eu fiz minha conferência e eu mostrei vários protocolos que estão sendo desenvolvidos aqui na universidade, vários ensaios clínicos controlados com nível de evidência alto, mostrando que a fotobiomodulação, a terapia fotodinâmica e alguns recursos e patentes que nós desenvolvemos aqui têm tido um papel muito significativo na qualidade de vida, inclusive, dos pacientes. Nós abordamos a questão da, da laser terapia, com as principais aplicações dentro da área de fisioterapia, então ressaltando ah, o crescente uso é, desse tipo de recurso de, te, de terapia com a aplicação em diferentes áreas, né, voltada para reparo tecidual, então a cicatrização de úlceras, reparo de tecido de tendão, reparo ósseo e também para analgesia. Sem dúvida foi um dos melhores eventos que eu participei porque ele é dedicado né, a, a essa temática. Então a gente aqui, a gente está falando com colegas que publicam em revistas internacionais de grande impacto, de grande importância para a área. Então assim, eu e os meus alunos que nós viemos aqui, nos sentimos muito bem e assim, conversando com pares, né? Então é muito bom, a gente aprendeu bastante. I'm assistant professor OK from Women's Center for Photomedicine, Mass General Hospital, Boston, United States. And my research is centered around using light to kill bacteria, to treat infection. Because, you know, the antibiotic resistance is a big problem, yeah. In some cases, some like nasty bacteria have become resistant to all the medications, all the antibiotics available. So there is a big problem for the multi-drug resistant infections. So that is why I'm interested in using alternative other techniques like light to kill the bugs. Particularly, I'm interested in using blue light, yeah. blue color light yeah, with a wavelength about 405 to 415 nanometer wavelengths yeah, to kill and kill bacteria because, uh, because of the uh, like the presence of endogenous porphyrins, some kind of photosensitizers inside the bacterial cells, naturally occurring endogenous inside 
uh, like photosensitizers. So many bacteria, they are sensitive, susceptible to blue light. Then they absorb blue light and kill themselves. <laughs> so this is uh, the mechanism of action. Uh, and so far we have found like many important like bugs, pathogens, like bacteria. They are very sensitive to blue light. Like so the molars are a very big problem in hospitals. So the molars are in it back to, and uh, Nasaria, Gonorrhea, and uh, many, many bugs that are sensitive to blue light. And at the same time, many of them have already become resistant to medications, to antibiotics. So blue light is supposed to be, uh, I think, it's very exciting uh, potential approach to treat the medication resistant uh, infections. Yeah. This is my interest. Yeah. Uh, how it began? Actually, initially, I was invited by my boss, Michael Hamlin. You know him. <laughs> he invited me to join his lab. Yeah. So. And at that time, I started my career of photomedicine. Yeah, it's about uh, 12 years ago. Because <laughs> I need somebody like with engineering background to do this kind of biological things. Yeah.